In the far future, humans colonize galaxies. But in one desert planet, humans have pushed their ingenuity to the max, which might come back to destroy them and follow a single father team up with an unlikely ally as he tries to save the person he loves. The movie opens with a monologue from Indy. She tells us about her father, Kane. Kane was a decorated Air Force pilot in the Earth military, but one day he makes a simple mistake that results in the death of all his crew. Kane was accused of negligence due to drug abuse, but there was no evidence for that, and he got pardoned of the case. But Kane wasn't the same after that. He couldn't get over his guilt, which resulted in his mirage falling apart. Few years has passed now, and Indy has come to the new planet to visit Kane, and as he gives her a tour around the planet, they argue about why he doesn't want to come back to Earth. Kane explains he is inspired by the idea of building a new civilization from scratch, but Indy doesn't buy it, and thinks he is just running away from his inner problems and his guilt. The two arrive at the capital Osiris, and Kane drops off Indy at his apartment and tells her he will see her in in a week as he needs to go back to Flotilla that floats above the planet, Kane's office is there, so during weekdays he spends working in the ship. That night we hear a prison guard reporting that the prison has been breached and that the Beats have escaped. We then see alien looking monsters roaring and running in the field. The next morning, Kane wakes up in his dorm. An AI called Travek then plays him the message sent to him. There is one from his ex-wife which he ignores, and then from Indy asking his permission to visit a landmark. She also informs him that her mom is dating a man named Todd, but before the message ends, it gets cut off. Travek informs him that communication has been temporarily disrupted, but when Kane asks when it will be back, Travek says he doesn't know. Meanwhile, General Linux, who commands the Exor fleet, calls in Colonel Michael to discuss what happened the night before. Michael suggests they tell everyone the truth and save whoever they can, but she tells him that admitting guilt will get them prosecuted for genocide. Linux then calls in all the commanders, including Kane, and tells them that the prisoners have broken out and are in possession of a lethal virus that, if released, would kill everyone on the planet. She then tells them that she is negotiating with them and to wait for her next order. Kane runs back to his room freaked out and tells Travek to contact Indy, but he is told the connection is still out. Michael then comes to his room and reveals everything to him. He informs him that five years ago, Exor built a facility inside the prison, which they used to breed a beast called a Ragged. Their plan was to contain these beasts until there were enough of them and then ship them out to new planets so they could efficiently kill indigenous species. He reveals to him that the Ragged have broken out and now are moving to the capital Osiris. He then tells him that Linux has decided to blow up the nuclear reactor in the city and wipe everything clean within 24 hours. She can then blame it on the prisoners and move on. Michael is revealing all this information so Kane can save his daughter before the city is blown up. He tells Kane the ship is going to be locked down in 20 minutes, so Kane steals a ship and starts driving down to the planet. Linux sends another fighter pilot after him, but he still manages to escape. With only his ship getting damaged, he ejects out of his ship and lands in a nearby lake. But as he tries to get up, he gets knocked out by a man named Sai. Sai drags Kane out of the water and points his gun at him while he waits for Kane to gain consciousness. Kane wakes up shortly after and Sai starts asking questions about who he is and why he is there. Kane tries to play dumb and says that the prisoners have a virus with them, but Sai reveals to him that he is one one of the prisoners and tells him about the ragged. Sai tells him that everyone in the prison is dead and that it wouldn't be long before everyone else dies. Kane then tells him about his daughter and begs Sai to help him get to Osiris. Sai is hesitant to help, but he agrees when Kane reveals to him that he has a military grade bunker that will protect them from the blast. In a flashback, we are taken to the day before, we see Sai in the prison cafe discussing with his friends Charles and Vim about escaping the prison. Prisoners on this planet are treated as slaves used for free Free labor. They also get no human rights, so the probability of them dying before getting freed is very high. But Sai has created a plan to escape the prison. He has another prisoner named Carmel fight with a guard and steal his keycard. He then hides it in solitary confinement. So the next time Sai and his crew get thrown in there, they can use the card and escape. Sai then gets up and starts a fight with a random prisoner from another gang, which starts a small riot in the cafe. The warden then grabs his guards and arrives at the cafe. Everyone is expecting for Sai to be taken by the guards, but the warden tells them to continue the fight and orders his guards to stand down as long as the other's prisoners behave and just watch the fight. The fight had started well for Sai, but he starts losing the fight and he gets his ass kicked. The other prisoner then starts choking him out, so Charles brings out a knife and stabs the guy on the neck, killing him. This starts a fight between every prisoner and everyone is sent to solitary confinement. In there, they are tortured with a continuously rotating tube, which is accompanied with a flashing light. The warden then picks Vim and Sai 
Fry to be taken out of solitary confinement and brought to the lab. Vim is but in the jail first, and the warden brings out the ragged. He explains that the ragged can turn humans into itself by bringing out their inner monster. We then see Vim getting attacked by the ragged, and he transforms into a ragger, just as a human transforms into a zombie. The warden then gets Sai ready for his transformation, but his cage suddenly opens and he drops into the floor below. Charles has managed to break out of the solitary confinement using the card, and he has also released the ragged so they can take out the guards. We see everything in chaos as the ragged attack. The guards and Vim also attacks and kills the warden. Back to the present. Kane and Sai travel to a secret bar so they could get supplies and a car. They see an armored bus parked outside, so Kane asks the bartender whose it is. She points him to Bill and Jip who are a drugged out couple playing a dart game, but using a knife. The bartender tells him to not disturb them while they are playing, but he doesn't listen and goes to them to talk to them. He interrupts their game to ask about their bus, but Jip gets mad and puts a knife on his neck. They then kneel him down and threaten to kill him, but Sai joins in and negotiates with them. He tells them about Kane's daughter and offers them $20,000 for their service. The couple agree to drive them, and they make their first drive to weapon dealers so they could stock up. They then buy multiple assault rifles and grenades for $30,000 and continue their journey. While they are driving, Kane informs them about the ragged and the impending explosion. He then agrees to also house them in his bunker if they help him get his daughter back. We are taken to another flashback to two years ago. We are back on Earth and Sai is getting the news from his lawyer that he might be sent to the new planet and that he would be made an example to other people. We then see why Sai was arrested in the first place. Sai was a nurse working in a big hospital one night while working the night shift. He gets told a drunk driver crashed into two people and killed one. Sai then goes into the emergency room to help the women that survived the crash, and he is shocked to see it is his wife. He sees her dying, and he is held outside while other doctors try to save her. Sai asks about his daughter, but realizes the other person dead was here, and even before he could finish grieving, his wife also passes away. Filled with anger, Sai goes to the room of the drunk driver, who only got minor injuries. He then beats him up and chokes him out, killing him. He is then arrested, and now he is on this planet. Back to the present, the crew arrives at Osiris in the morning, and they are woken up by a ragged attacking their car. The city is in chaos as people try and run away from the beasts, but they are having no luck. Bill parks his bus next to Kane's apartment, and he and Jip shoot back the raggeds while Sai and Kane run into the building. Kane and Sai make it into Kane's apartment, but as they enter, they find the babysitters dead on the floor. Kane then starts calling for Indy, and she comes out of the closet. With his daughter safe, they get ready to go back, but the ragged have made their way up the stairs and are blocking their way out. Sai then sees only one way out, so he picks up Indy and jumps off the balcony and falls onto the bus. Kane then follows his lead and also jumps onto the bus. While Kane and Sai were saving Indy, Bill actually gets shot by another person who was trying to kill the Raggeds, and he dies. And with the Ragged coming for them with numbers, Jip drives away without having time to mourn her lover. They escape out of the city, but now they have only minutes to make it to the bunker. Kane tells Jip the location, and she starts driving fast there, and as they get close, and with five minutes left, the crew gets spotted by an Exor jet. General Linux is watching them through the jet's camera and orders for them to be stopped. And just before the crew make it to the bunker, the jet stops in front of them and rains down bullets on them. The jet then leaves as there is no time, and we see Jip dead. We then see Sai, who is alive, but as he looks back, he finds Kane dead. Indy is still alive though, so he grabs her and starts running to the bunker as she cries. They then make it through the first door, but as they open the bunker and start going down the ladder, Sai gets stunned by a ragged and gets infected. Sai shoots and kills the ragged, and they both get in the bunker five seconds before the planet is blown up. In the bunker, Sai sees himself changing, so he tells Indy to grab him a scissor, but realizing he is trying to kill himself, she refuses and tells him that she can't do this alone. Sai tries to reason with her, but she hugs him. Few weeks later, Exor sends two researchers to study the planet, and to see if there are any survivors, the researchers find the bunker and realize there might be someone there, then then see Indy from afar and try to talk to her. But Sai, who is now a ragged, kills one of them and holds the other one. Indy then walks to the researcher and asks her about what Exor told the world. The women then inform them that Exor said the prisoners blew up the nuclear reactor. Indy then forces the woman to take them back to the ship, as the ship is now going back to Earth. With her life on the line, the woman agrees and boards them on her ship, and the movie ends as the researchers start her ship and drive it back to the Exor fleet. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.